What is up? Haven't made a video in a while. Here's one for the ice machine at home. Just took it apart for some maintenance. Lucky that was even still making ice. Anyway, this thing was really starting to fuck up. Uh, I think I have a video clip, maybe I'll insert it in there, where this was just, or some photos, this was just nasty. So, I already took this apart and cleaned it up. I mean, remember this thing was very used when I got it. Um, and then I noticed that it wasn't purging. So that's this dump valve here, purge solenoid. The switch is also kind of worn, but it's only affecting the wash cycle, which I found out when I went to wash it. And the other thing that's always been sucking is that little, uh, since I got it, the bin full thermostat, which just plugs into here, that's been real touchy. Anyway, I did put a new motor in it when I first got it. Other than that, it has been running, but it's not good to, when it doesn't dump the water because that water gets really heavy and nasty. So, And our water here must not be that bad with minerals because I don't taste it. Most of the ice I do use just to cool cans or bottled drinks in my ice chest, but today we're gonna, I'm gonna fix that up. So I got a new uh, dump valve right here. And then um, the switch ain't coming until tomorrow, but it runs. And then I was building myself something out in the garage. I was gonna mount maybe uh, some uh, infrared emitter and detector across this. And I actually had that a microprocessor programmed and everything in my mock-up out there. And it, but I don't know. I, I have the feeling that's just become a maintenance nightmare, putting the infrared detector transmitter in there. Who knows what will happen. It might even skew the ranges with that temperature range when I install it compared to the way it's sitting up in the garage. Who knows? And I'm like, all right. So I thought, that would be nice to put one of those, like, four, those A421s or whatever you call them, you know, digital thermostats in. Well, I was looking them up. Those are pretty expensive, but I found this gem. Amazon. Now I know, um, cross my fingers with it. This was cheap. 35 bucks and it has it's 10 amps, which I think will just barely suffice. But it actually has a plug and an outlet. Oh, look at that. It says cooling heating. I didn't realize that. So evidently it must be uh, wired that way for normally open, normal clothes. Basically it's running it to the outlet. And it's got a little uh, six foot long probe. I'm gonna try to shove into there, or I'm gonna, or I'll put it in a different piece of copper. I think that'll work way better than uh, the the OEM type device will work. This does use the whole length of the tube. That way, in case the ice just kind of lands here, here, or whatever. So, but all right, there we go. There is uh, the old one. After I knocked the calcium off of it, just to find the screw. And that screw actually came right out. I mean, it wasn't buried with over with calcium, but once I knocked it off, I mean, it, I, it came out, it turned so easy. I thought the, uh, you know, it was just stripping out over the head, but it actually turned right out. Here's a new one. Seems to be an exact match. So Amazon worked out. I was gonna go down to the parts distributor, but didn't make it there, so I ordered one. The internet. Put that in there. It looks like it's been leaking down in there for a while. But I mean that's just calcium without hurt nothing. Can leave it in there. Let's see the rest of it. it's not too bad. There's controls. But I don't know what the mechanical timer's for. Or no. Nope. Nope. Some sort of combination pressure switch. Oh that's it's been a long time since I've worked on these like out in the field. Probably just the actual low pressure switch. And it might be adjustable, you know, for uh, in and uh, and how it works is when a suction pressure gets down to a certain point, then you got the uh, it closes, and then you have this uh, you add time past that point for harvest starts. That uh, it's an ABB brand timer, huh? I don't even know if I noticed that. Here's the bin full thermostat. Not using that, I'll just probably crank it all the way or just bypass it. Put on that other digital, probably just shove it up here, I think. Well, one thing I had to change was I had to re-clock this bracket here. I went to put it down in there and the screw holes were aiming that way. 
So all you have to do is you just turn these and, and take off the coil, pull out the plunger, and then you just turn this, which is actually clockwise to remove and counterclockwise to tighten back on. So I'm not, I need to get in there. I'm not going to film it, but that's how that comes apart. These are usually made to take apart so you can reclock them. You can actually clean them. A lot of time, dump valves and fill valves, even Hoshizakis, all that kind of stuff, don't need to be replaced. You just need to take them apart and get the piece of calcium or something out of there. So a lot of times, it's good to go for a while. This one had a, was beyond that. Let me just look at it, but the coil windings were totally open, so didn't bother even taking it apart. Temporarily interrupt this video. Let me show you guys why I really need this ice machine, which is why I installed this just quickly and gave up on my other project and need it just to work, and, which is working great now, uh, is because uh, a couple years ago, <laughs> wife just said, we need a new fridge. And she liked this one and picked it out and we got this Samsung fridge. Now our last side-by-side -side, on its ice maker, it had this huge like storage bin inside here where the ice dumped down and filled up and it held a lot. I was actually able to get quite a bit into a small ice chest or whatever for work every day um, in the mornings and then it would make some more after that. And I replaced that ice maker or fixed parts when it would go bad. I think I might have made videos about it a long time ago. We had that fridge for a while. But then we got this one. And this ice machine sucks ass. It just sucks. First of all, it doesn't make shit for ice. It's for storage. I have been this apart for a long time. It's just, I got a pretty small bin. Whoa, it's already got, is that a crack in it already? <laughs> it's got a crack in it. We haven't been using it. Look at that, that doesn't hold shit. And it's just odd, man. It's nothing like your traditional style. Look at this, look at all this. This is the thing that happens. Ever since it was new, every week or so, this would happen, it would get kind of bad and it would jam up and you can see it's all jammed up in there. Just full of ice. <laughs> well, I don't even know if there's a switch to just well, I have it off somehow. There must be a switch. But anyway, yeah. We don't use that thing. Or if it's probably not turned off, it's probably just stuck like that. <laughs> and I just never did anything with it. It's a piece of junk. Doesn't hold shit, and it just, uh, you know, always freezes up. And it's a pain in the ass. I mean, look how that thing is way up in there. Fuck that thing, man. So, eh. I knew I had uh, somebody relative... One of the bro-in-laws had given that to another family member. They never used it. It sat for like 10 years in somebody else's garage. And I got this thing. And I had to fix the uh, motor and kind of play with it a little bit. And then it worked. And I kind of used it. Okay, before we go try out what I just put on the ice I'm going to show you what I was building here. So, so far, just a test circuit. Actually, I mean, I made some effort kind of craft and all that there's my extension cord uh you know, transmitter receiver doesn't really matter and when it's blinking like that you know it's like when it's running and that's and that means the output was on and then uh whenever i would block it you know see that led stops i'm gonna put my hand in here do it over here so i was gonna put it like where the where the ice curtain normally would open and the ice gets stopped right there. Well, it likes to get stopped right there whenever it gets full. So I was going to have it just block this beam. And if you block it for like 8 seconds or 10 or whatever, then it's going to turn off the output. Green LED, which is my status, is a slow blink now. So that means it's just like in standby. It is blinking. And then once, like, you got some ice and it fell out of the way, then it was going to go to the short cycle delay there. like that but it's flashing a lot faster like qu two quick flashes and then a pause and two quick flashes and a pause kind of like galloping you know it doesn't make a dis difference right here but basically after uh, a minute or so it will go back on and the time delay just wore off and it just turned back on fast flash for run mode 
locked in the ice, you know. So. Anyway, I was even going to maybe even re recycle some electronics I had. So this board would actually work. It's got this, you know, nor uh, normally open contacts with relays. going to break that uh, unit in there. And then it accepted a digital in, uh, four to twenty milliamp or a zero to five volt input. No, it says uh, input is up to fifteen volts DC. So, but it was anything from as low as point seven five, and you have two little thresholds you could set. I actually kept a couple of these things. I got the lids. I thought maybe they work for good project boxes, you know, because I I spend money on these to buy these. So they were throwing these out from control. So I took about well, three or four of them. So. I was going to do that, but um, I don't know. I, As I said earlier, I think this was just going to be a maintenance nightmare. So, anyway, go show you what I did if I got some quiet in here because the family's going nuts. So, I bought this contraption on Amazon. Set it for 38 degrees for now, just to see with like a six degree differential or so. I don't know, maybe a little more. So the ice on top of my probe is at 33. And this is kind of rinky dink, but I'm gonna pull this off now. So uh, this was brass. I tried to ream it out, but it didn't matter. I couldn't ream it deep enough anyway for this probe, but I put some, uh, you know, the silicone heat transfer down in there and shoved this in there. So it's got like half, the width to get the temperature from. You can see now it's temperature is going to climb. I kind of have it monitored to see kind of what the temperature likes to stay because I think when this door is closed it's like an ice chest but there is an air gap between the actual ice and the probe so the air above the ice is always going to be above freezing just how much and then when the ice lands on that probe I know it's going to get it a couple degrees above freezing, you know, being that some of the, the some of the probe is touching ice, but the rest isn't. So what was it down to like 36, 35 degrees? 34 degrees, I think is what it was, right? So once I kind of see where this thing likes to run, then I can make my adjustments. I put this cover a little too fast, huh? Yep, I hear the float valve adding water when I did that. So when it goes in a harvest next time, it should dump the water again. So I don't know when that purge valve failed, but uh, it hasn't been purging the water since it did, and that means the water was getting heavier and heavier that, you know, didn't bond with the ice. Now I know when you evaporate water, it leaves behind pretty much all of the sediments, like any boil water or evaporate water. Um, when it's freezing water, it still purifies the ice a little bit by mostly pure water freezing, but it does catch the sediments. So it's not leaving behind 100%, you know, like really heavy, you know, water, but it definitely does still get heavier and heavier. I caramba! So I just walked down there to check it out, and it looks like, you know, ice. Uh, fell on that long enough that it uh, dropped the temperature. Now it's going back up. So it dropped the batch. I know that I did start making another batch probably before it shut off. I have to move this thing a little bit and see what happens. Alright, well, it's been a day or so. Getting some ice in my ice chest, and the ice seems to be bridging perfectly again. Just there. It all comes in hard. Have this one. Electronic sensor shoved in there underneath. And now it's not shutting off early, it seems. It seems like it's working pretty good. And this hasn't fried. It doesn't really feel hot. So I'm sure it's got a relay on a circuit board in there. It said 10 amps and I'm sure this thing probably pulls about that. So, anyway, I think it's good to go for now. Isomatic Home Edition back in operation. Be sure to like and subscribe and all that. Stay tuned.